So you're stuck. You've run out of steam, got writer's block. Here's the thing. You've got to embrace the stickiness of getting stuck. Because getting stuck is good. It's part of the process. There is a reason you are stuck. You're stuck because the narrative path stones you have laid have led you to a place where there is no way forward. So I'm currently writing my second book, Beetle Queen. And I wrote 23 chapters of what will probably be a 30 chapter book and I got stupendously stuck. I couldn't make anything happen in my imagination. My characters wouldn't talk to each other. Well, they wouldn't say anything interesting anyway. And I couldn't make there be a next thing. After some consideration and quite a lot of pulling out of hair, I realised that the reason I was stuck was that the characters in the scene didn't have a motivation that would take the action forward or make the events that I wanted to happen take place. Now, when you are drowning in the sea of stuck, there is a truth, a life raft for you to cling to. And it is this. Plot comes from characters who have objectives and a strong motivation to achieve that objective no matter what hurdle stands in the way. When you get stuck, it's not because your imagination has run dry or even that you don't know what happens next. It's because what we're trying to do is write something plausible that's believable for the reader. If your character lacks the right motivation, then you won't be able to make them do anything interesting in a convincing way. So if your writing grinds to a halt, take a look at the scene that refuses to be written and interrogate it. What is it that you need to happen in this scene? And why is that not possible? What do your characters want? How badly do they want it? For instance, let's imagine a scene in a cafe. Two friends meet, Jane and Sarah. Now, for the main events in your story to take place, you need Jane and Sarah to fall out and leave the cafe angry with one another, going their separate ways. However, you won't be able to engineer a convincing argument if they arrive at the cafe without objectives. So let's make Jane the protagonist here and give her the strongest objective. Sarah has just come to the cafe to have coffee with her friend. But Jane has come to the cafe to get the truth from Sarah. She's going to challenge her about something. Something that will make Sarah angry. But what? Jane's not going to summon up the courage to challenge her friend unless she has a compelling motivation. So perhaps, earlier on, she saw Sarah doing something that she shouldn't have been doing. And right here is the problem that I'm talking about because that motivation, that fundamental driving force that will make this scene in the cafe actually work, has to have happened earlier in the book. Now, for me, this is one of the Herculean struggles of writing a first draft. When you start out, you don't have the level of detail or knowledge about the characters and the story to have been able to place those foundation stones perfectly. I know that I want these characters to fall out because I know what I want to happen afterwards, but it's not occurred to me to have thought of what the motivation for that argument might be. And now I'm faced with writing it, and it doesn't want to be written, I realise that an incident needs to have happened earlier in the book for that motivation to make sense and to trigger the plot in the way that I need it to be triggered. So at this point, you are faced with two choices. One, backtrack and try and rewrite the character's path to give them the motivation to do the thing that they need to do to move the plot forwards. Or... Two, improvise and keep going. Now, instinctively, you will want to do the first one. I always want to do the first one. But the second way is better. And here's why. Let me explain. 
I work in a theatre and improvisation is something I'm really familiar with and to me writing the first draft of a book is like performing a long improvisation. The characters in the book are the actors. Now the main rule of improvising is that you mustn't block another actor. You must accept anything an actor introduces into a scene. You can't say you're not an alien because you're a dentist or this can't be a swamp because we just stepped out of a shoe shop and there are no shoe shops in swamps. When performing an improvisation, you must do whatever you need to do to allow the action to continue forwards, even if it seems utterly ridiculous. And sometimes this bears surprising fruit because it frees the imagination to be spontaneous. It unlocks it from the shackles of plausibility. If you listen to the previous podcast about writing every day, you'll know that I don't recommend going backwards on your first draft. Because once you start going backwards, you can get trapped in a catch-22. You'll discover other characters need to be rewritten to work with your newly developed character. You'll want to improve some dodgy dialogue. Things will start changing that affect the story later on. And by the time you return to the bit where you hit the wall, you've changed so much that you're in a tangle and you're double stuck. You're writer's block stuck. Which is why I have that fundamental rule of the first draft. Don't look back. Instead, improvise. Accept the improbable for the sake of moving the action forwards. However, before moving forwards, do... Put a post-it note or comment in the draft in the place where you've got stuck. It would say something like this. Something needs to happen to Jane to make her want to slap Sarah's face here. You can decide that Jane sees Sarah kiss John in chapter two. Or you can decide nothing and come back to it once you've completed your first draft. But the slap will take place. And this is the important bit. Whatever you do... Do not go back to chapter two and write the scene where Jane sees Sarah kiss John. All you need to identify is what the motivation is to make this scene work. The moment you imbue your character with a motivation, even if it's just in your imagination, you should be able to move the action forward. Suddenly there's a reason Jane slapped Sarah's face. And so you can write it. And the story will flow again. And you'll have discovered something new about your character. Jane's a little jealous. You'll have a better understanding of who they are. How they feel. Remember, your first draft is private. The first draft is you sketching out what your story needs to be a complete picture. It highlights the narrative foundations you need to lay in the opening chapters of your second draft. It helps you form the backstory for your characters and deepens your understanding of who they are. Perhaps this isn't the first time that Sarah has kissed one of Jane's boyfriends. Getting stuck is inevitable, but it's a helpful part of the process. Embrace it, improvise, and keep writing. You have been listening to M.G. Leonard, author of Beetle Boy, available in all good bookshops from March 2016. Follow me on Twitter or go to my website mglenner.com The wonderful music was by Sam Sparling Thank you for listening and keep writing